nice to see all your beautiful faces. Um, I just want to say happy Mother's Day to all the beautiful moms that are here in the house today. We are so blessed to have you today here with us. Um, my mom is not here today, but I want to specifically say happy Mother's Day to my mother-in-law, who is probably watching. Uh, thank you for raising up such a wonderful and godly man. Um, and I want to specifically honor the mothers for your strength, moms, each one of you for your strength, your courage, and your dedication to your families. So mothers physically give birth to their children. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> others grow their families through adoption. And still others serve in roles like stepmoms or bonus parents, and we want to honor them all. Women, women are a force of fierce, protective, and powerful love continuously offered to the rising generation. We want to celebrate womanhood and motherhood because it comes from God. I just want to let you know that you're beautifully and wonderfully made by your creator. You're not made by mistake. God made you a woman. Don't believe the lies that people tell you out there. The only one that you need to believe is the Lord. And he made you the way you are. Never doubt it. And I'm standing here because I believe what he says that about you. I don't know who's struggling here today, but I fell in my heart to tell you, you were wonderfully and beautifully made as a woman. And to do a little something fun this morning, I would like to know who is the youngest mom here today? So if you are, I'm not gonna ask anybody in the teens, uh, in their 20s, anybody in their 20s who is a mom? Oh, come on, get up. How old are you, sweetie? You're 29. Anybody else 20s? So you won a prize. Oh, wait, there's another one. Michaela, how old are you? Oh, you won. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. So, Michaela, you, thank you. Sam is going to bring you the little gift for you. Happy Mother's Day. You're the youngest mom here this morning. I'll give you something too. <laughs> and now I'm gonna ask, who is the oldest mom here? I wanna know if it's any mothers in their 80s in the house. Raise your hand. How old are you? 83, anybody older than 83? How old? 86. Anybody older than 86? What do we have over there? How old? Mary Tardif, how old are you? So 86 so far the highest. Anybody higher than 90, the 86? Let me know. If no, we have a winner. Oh, thank you, Sam. Happy Mother's Day to our 86-year-old mom. Awesome. Yeah, we like to clap. We like to have fun here. Is that okay? Like my husband says, we love to have fun here. So what a privilege is to be a mom. I love being a mom. And these past 10 months have been very emotional for me as a mom. I mean, I started with me. I'm already an emotional mom. <laughs> and I have cried a lot. And I'm still crying. And I have felt at the same, at the same time peace and contentment. And I also have been having a lot of prayer and conversations with my God. And as many of you know, we had to take our son Luke, our oldest, to college last year, all the way to Tulsa, Oklahoma, saying goodbye to Luke and leaving him there in Oklahoma was one of the most difficult things that I had to do as a mom. And yes, Excuse me. This week, 
as well, I had to say bye to my 12-year-old because he went to nature's classroom trip. And I know, it was only here in Connecticut, and only four days, but that was his first time leaving the nest. And yes, I cry. Well, for 40 minutes compared to 21 hours, which Tulsa, that's how long it takes to go to Tulsa, it's nothing. But, um, you know, I know that this is part of what our children have to go through. And no matter how old they are, but it's hard to let them go. And how many of you moms know what I'm talking about? I am happy that my son, Luke, will be here for about three months. And, I, and having my three kids under the same roof makes my heart very happy and is the greatest gift that I could get as a mother. So um, today, let's, let's focus and let's allow the Lord to speak to us and the Holy Spirit. So let's pray. So Father, I just want to welcome you in this place Thank you so much, Lord, for bringing us here, Lord. Thank you that we can gather together to hear about you, Lord, to exalt you, to let your name known, Lord, uh, because really, Lord, that's all it's all about is you, Jesus. Father, I don't want to be standing on the way of what you want to speak, the things that you want to say. Lord Jesus, I pray that I will decrease and that you will increase always, Lord. You are the center. We, I, I, I want all the attention, Lord, for you, our Savior, our Lord, and Holy Spirit. We welcome you right now. I pray that you minister to every heart. I pray that spiritual eyes will be open, spiritual ears will be open, and the hearts of people will receive, Lord, what you have to speak today. So we welcome you in this place, and we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So before I start, I want to warn you of my very heavy, thick accent. So for all of you who are new today, I just want to let you know that I am from Bogota, Colombia, and yes, I'm first generation. Therefore, the heavy, thick accent, okay? And guess what? I am very proud to carry this heavy thick accent everywhere I go, because it reminds me of my humble beginnings and all the things that the Lord has done in my life, and I give all the glory only to him. Amen, Amen to him. So, well, today I would like to ask you if you have ever heard of the term social media influencer. If you don't know what it means, well, a social media influencer is someone who has the power to affect the purchasing decisions of others because of their authority, knowledge, position, or relationship with their audience. According to the most recent statistic, the projected number of global social media users in 2023 is 4.89 billion. And did you know that these influencers are categorized? There are different categories and they, they fall according to the amount of followers that they have. So maybe here, I don't know, maybe there is somebody here who falls under any of these categories. Let us know if you are if, if you have um, influence and you have between 1,000 and 10,000 followers, you're considered a nano influencer. If you have between 10,000 and 100,000 followers, you are a micro influencer. Between 100,000 and 1 million followers is considered a macro influencer. And if you have over a million followers, it's a mega or celebrity influencer. And does anybody know who is the most influential person on social media worldwide with more than 500 million total followers? If you don't know, anybody guess? No Kardashian, no, <laughs> which I'm glad. <laughs> well, guess what? It's Cristiano Ronaldo, one of the best soccer players in the world. And he is considered a mega influencer. So, last year in January of 22, we took our kids to see a Knicks game in New York City. At the end of the game, unfortunately they lost, 
and they lost this year too. Um, my son, Lou, we were on the streets walking, and he recognized one of these social media influencers. So if you could put the, the, put the, uh, the image. So this guy, his name is Gary V. And Lou was not shy. He went after him and said, hey, can I take a picture with, with you? He let him. And he has 10 million followers. So as you can see in the picture, these social media influencers are everyday people making lots of money in Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, uh, what else? TikTok, Facebook. What is really wonderful, you can put it away now, please. What is really wonderful is that the Bible, God's word, is always ahead of the curve, ahead of them. The Bible talks about the significance of influencing others thousands and thousands of years ago before companies paid big money to these social media influencers. But instead, instead of being concerned with selling a product and make lots of money, in the Bible, in God's word, we can see the power of influencers who change the world for the glory of God. God wants us to understand that people are watching. They're watching us. And we might not be mega influencers with millions of followers, but we have the power to affect decisions of others because of our authority, our knowledge, position, and relationship with people around us. Every single one of us have influence. And we should ask three questions on a regular basis. Who am I influencing? What kind of influence am I? And where will my influence lead? When Jesus called his followers the light of the world, it came from Costco. <laughs> so when Jesus called his followers the light of the world, he was addressing their influence. God has placed you and I exactly where he wants us to be in this point of history in our world. Maybe we're not celebrities like this guy that we just saw. We're millions of followers, but God has entrusted us to us in such a time like this, like this. All of our talents, all of our gifts, our time, and the truth of who he is. So today, I want you to remember that he has entrusted to us our influence. And we are to be influencers for the Lord. Jesus tells us <clears throat> in Matthew 5, known as the Sermon of the Mountain, how, oops, how to be Christians and how we are to be influenced in this world. Let's read it. Matthew 5, uh, verse 14. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. But on the lampstand, it gives light to all who are in the house. You, your light must shine before people in such a way that they might see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Jesus tells us that we are the light of the world. We need to recognize the influence that God has entrusted to us. When you and I don't steward our influence, we can negatively impact an entire nation in the Bible, we can see few examples, like in the book of Numbers, chapter 13 and 14. An entire nation was negatively influenced by 10 spies. As a result, they wandered throughout the desert for 40 years until that generation 
was completely wiped out and a, new, and a new generation rose. And on top of that, they were never allowed to enter the promised land. Let's read in Numbers 14, 36, 37. So the man Moses had sent to explore the land, who returned it and made the whole community grumble against him by spreading a bad report about it. These men who were responsible for spreading the bad report about the land were struck down and died of a plague before the Lord. Another example was King Rehoboam, which you find in 2 Chronicles 10, 6 to 8. It says, but Rehoboam rejected the advice the elders gave him and consulted the young men who had grown up with him and were serving him. We can see that he sought counsel from the elders, but he did not listen. Instead, he was influenced by the people that he had grown up with. The nation of Israel then split, and they experienced great and very painful consequences. When we listen to the wrong influence, or if we are influencing others negatively, we can jeopardize our future. However, in contrast, we also have great example of so many people that are influencers in the Bible, such as Esther, who became light in such a dark time. Basically, what happened? There was a time in the history of Israel when a plot was planned to completely annihilate the land of Israel. And unfortunately, nowadays, that plan is still going on. There is many nations that want to make sure to wipe out Israel from the map. However, God placed Esther as a queen during that time. It says in Esther 4, 14, 16, For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish. Yet, who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go gather all the youths who are present in Shushan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will fast, fast likewise. And so I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Esther, as we can see, was confronted with the decision to be an influencer requiring a lot of courage. Esther requested that prayer and fasting be done to be, to be light. Remember, you always have to cover everything in prayer because we are influencing people for the Lord. Those prayers gave Esther the strength to make the decision to be a light to her people and the nation of Israel. And the nation was spared. God delivered Israel to Queen Esther's intervention. And today, and if we think of ourselves, and in the time that we're living today, right now, I want you to think of these questions. Who are you influencing right now do you have a big or a small sphere of influence i don't know maybe you have an inner circle maybe this inner circle is your family your children your spouse your closest friends your spiritual family here at church or an intermediate circle which is more like the people that you work with the people that you do business with, the people that you do hobbies with, your classmates, people that you have a good relationship with. Or your outer circle, which will be more of the people that you, are, you have acquaintances with, or social media friends. Who are these people that God has trusted you to influence? Whether we know it or not, Every time we act or say something, we are either pointing people towards Jesus or towards the world. Well, like Esther, you are also light. B, 
big bright light. Jesus says that we are the light of the world. You are so valuable because our world is in complete darkness and you have a purpose to shine in it. If you could please uh, lower the, the, the light. The other day we were at home and we lost power. There was an accident and some wires came down. Everything was super dark. Then we used these lamps and it just light up the whole the first floor. And here we still have lights. But look, the light is seen even from a far distance. And the smallest light can dispel any darkness. However, we have a choice. It is possible for somebody to actually put the light under the basket. As a follower of Jesus, if you are a follower of Jesus, you are not shining your own light. You have to be an influencer for the Lord and not an influencer for yourself. Jesus tells us in John 8, 12, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Our world is in darkness and without Jesus. People out there walk in darkness, stumbling and tripping because they cannot see. Recently, I had the opportunity to be a small light at one of the places where I work. And I wanted to share this testimony to encourage you. Because there will be times, I know it, because I have gone through it, where you feel intimidated to speak up and shine your light. I felt compelled to look for an extra job because I have a college kid. How many know what we're talking about? And to help and to be a blessing to an elderly couple. So the husband is 88, the wife is 91. Both, considered in their age, are relatively healthy. And the nice thing is that both live at home. Both are adorable, and I love being there for them. I feel very glad going because every time I go, it brings joy to them and to me as well. And I have great conversations with them about different topics, and I also like to bring up God all the time. I love talking about what God is doing. So one day, as I went to work with them, they were telling me that during the weekend, Mr. Bolton, the husband, has gone to the ER because he had excruciating pain in his stomach. And that he was sent home because all he could do was to wait during the week to see the doctor and to schedule the surgery to fix a hernia. As I was ready to leave, I really felt that God was telling me to ask if I could pray for him. I was surprised because he humbly was like, no, it's okay. And look at me, very surprised that I was asking him that question. However, with a smile on my face, I didn't take no for an answer. This petite Hispanic mama wasn't going to give up. And I started to let him know that God cares for him and that he wanted to touch him and heal him. And I immediately put my hand on his arm and I started to pray. I closed my eyes. I didn't care if the wife or him were with the eyes open or closed. But I just started praying and I, whatever was the Holy Spirit putting in my heart. I also felt to pray blessing, and to speak highly and favorably, favorably things about the two of them. And as I finished praying, the wife was so sweet and said, that was so nice. And I thought, that she would be uncomfortable because I was, I was praying for her husband's healing. But both of them were very grateful. They looked like no one has ever asked them to pray for them like that. So I wanted to let you know that I went back a few days later to their home. And when I asked them how the doctor's appointment went, the husband said, 
the doctor couldn't find anything wrong, that he didn't need surgery. So praise the Lord. <laughs> Mr. Bolton then went to say, it was because of mm, your prayer. And I say, uh-uh. I immediately told him, it wasn't me. I made sure Mr. Bolton knew it was the Lord who touched him and healed him. All of the glory to him. He only was able to do such a great work in his body. I was so excited. <laughs> See, when we act like lie, we point people to Christ, our great deliverer. You too have direct impact in people's lives because they see you up close, especially your inner and intermediate circle. They experience the joy, the peace, the faith, and the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. So once again, I ask you, who are you influencing today? What kind of influence are you? And where will your influence lead? And today, because it's Mother's Day... I would like to talk specifically to all the moms and any women who had any influence upon the younger generations. The word of God is so powerful in showing us a great example of great influencers, mothers and grandmothers. In 2 Timothy 1.5, the apostle Paul reminds us that even one parent or grandparent can have great influence in one family. Timothy um, had the benefit of being taught the fate of God by his mother and grandmother. Paul reminded Timothy, if we can put the Bible verse, in 2 Timothy 1 5. I call to remember the genuine faith that is in you, Timothy, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. Eunice and I am pursued is in you also. Notice that only these two women are praised and acknowledged for the example they provided at home when Timothy was a young boy. His father, by the way, was a Gentile and a Greek and a not believer on Jesus Christ for what we understand and what they say in Acts 16, 1 to 3. Yet, beginning with Timothy Grant's mother, Lois, and then on the mother Eunice, they were able to make a difference in teaching Timothy as a boy. Timothy later became one of the great early ministers of the church and a faithful companion and co-worker of the Apostle Paul. This was possible, possible in spite of the negative influence of the Gentile nation that they were living at. And in a home also with an unbeliever. The positive chase choices Lois, the grandmother, made definitely benefit all of her future generations. So to all the moms here who have an influence over the younger generations, I want to remind you that a good mother is not the only one who bakes great treats or who's cools a certain way or he keeps or keeps the house tidy and organized and well decorated or who has her children and millions of activities a good mother is one that acknowledges her need for the power of God to train and teach and change the hearts of her children and to point them towards Jesus the most important thing that we can do for our kids each day is to seek the Lord, moms, and trust him. To acknowledge our weakness, not rely on ourselves. He will take all of our weakness and willingness, and he will turn it into a great miracle. So I want to end today with this story, how a mom influenced her child in such a powerful way. If you could please put the image, that'd be great. Thank you. This is the story of Dr. Ben Carson. He is a respected neurosurgeon, pediatric neurosurgeon, and he also was a pres presidential candidate. He has an amazing story, and he credits his mom for the success in his life. His mother's name was Sonia Carson. 
Dr. Carson said, I not only saw and felt the difference my mother made in my life, I'm still living out that difference as a, as a man. Ben Carson's mom grew up in a foster home and received only a third grade education. She was 13 years old when she got married, but when Ben was A, the parents divorced. Unfortunately, the father had already a secret uh, family, another secret family. She worked as many as three jobs to support her boys. And when Ben was in fifth grade, he uh, came home with a not so good report card. So Sonia knew she needed to ask God for the wisdom she needed to raise her sons into in succeed in life. So one time, Ben Carson was receiving an award, and he quoted these words from the mom. Benny, if you can read, honey, you can learn just about anything you want to know. So Sonia chose to limit the son's television only to two programs a week and took them to the public library, and that choice, that choice changed their lives. Each week, the boys were required to check out and read two library books. Sonia required the boys to write reports, and she will gray them with a highlighter. And later in life, both boys realized that their mother had not read those reports that she had graded. And you know why? Because Sonia was not able to read. Reading did change Dr. Carson's life, but so did his faith in God. Sonia Carson prayed for God's wisdom. Ben Carson sought God's wisdom and God responding by granting their prayers. Ben Carson excelled in high school and went to attend Yale University, the University of Michigan School of Medicine, and did his residency at John Hopkins. And that hospital would be his home for most of his career as a pediatric neurosurgeon. Sonia Carson knew that with God, anything, anything was possible. And she passed a strong faith unto her son. Sonia Carson's life motto was, learn to do your best and God will do the rest. I just wanted to encourage you today. Because we're not called just to coast alone and wait here until we get to heaven. Or just go to church on Sunday and just check mark on your to-do list. Or to waste what God has given us. Or hide it away. No. We are called to be good stewards, to use our gifts, to use our talents, to serve him with joy and thanksgiving, to shine his light. And be an influence in the lives of others around us. And specifically, I have been having a burden for this young generation. They need us. They need each one of you they need great influencers for Christ our family is the most important following we have our influence on them is immeasurably and our responsibility to influence them is for, I mean to influence them for Christ is non-negotiable so my question how are we influencing them are we pointing them towards Christ? And what we need to do to start doing differently. I feel in my heart many parents, including some moms, feel like they have failed. And we think that we don't have what it takes to influence your children. I want to let you know that that's a lie from the enemy. You have what it takes to make a difference in their children's lives. I don't care how much you have messed up or the things that you had done in the past. Listen, God can use you. It's never too late to start with the Lord. And yes, we don't have what it takes. 
And we don't have within ourselves to be light, no matter how good we are as a person. But guess what? I do have great news today. Jesus entered into this world. He entered as a human being. And he paid for the penalty of all of our sins. So that he could be in the center of our lives and in the lives of our families if we allow him. Maybe your relationship with your kids is broken. Or you have blown it with other family members or friends or co-workers and so forth. You haven't been lied or a great influencer for Christ. And I know in a few minutes, Pastor Eric is going to be here. And he's going to have a special invitation for you and we'll pray for you. But you can change the curse by giving your life to Jesus or to recommit today to him. Recommit your life to Jesus. If you humble yourself, admit that you need the forgiving of your sins, you can become a new creation in Christ. Surrender your life and become an influencer to point others to our Savior today. And I want to end up with this a scripture that we read before. Your light must shine before people in such a way that they might see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Amen. <laughs>